Uh, I received uh, one question from uh, a uh, Google sheet. Uh, someone asked about that uh, if there is an exam or not, or uh, these are projects. So for this course, there is no exam, it's uh, just a project, one project at the end of the course. Uh, almost we will start this project after uh, six uh, sessions. And um, Within these uh, six sessions, uh, you should uh, get prepared to this uh, idea what do what, what, uh, you want to do? Um, is it uh, something related to floor plan and zoning? Is it something related to urban plan? So it's up to you. And I will try to follow up with each one uh, according to each project. If there is a specific tools, each one needs it, I will, uh, I will help you with this. And uh, for uh, there is another question that was related to, uh, to the intuition of human and how it uh, how it is related to the machine learning or how they work together. So uh, from my point of view, it's um, it's something related, uh, similar to uh, to what you are doing on Google. So you open the book. Say you want to uh, search for something, you want to search for something to, to repair a window. So you write window, then I uh, recognize our uh, it's uh, it understands that it's a Windows operating system. So then you say uh, uh, a window repairing, then okay, it's a steel window repairing system. So then after a while you recognize, okay, so then I need to uh, figure out something to distinguish between these uh, two things. Okay. Between the windows as a operating system and windows as a real window, then you say the glass is okay, so then glass is okay. Then you, you want this glass to be a higher weight, then you, you, need, you add uh, this kind of applications. So, from one side, you learn how this should work, and at the same time, uh, Google uh, uh, save uh, all these cookies. Uh, your, uh, what you want to do at the end. So gradually it should be that it's a uh, direct you to your uh, short answer uh, related to you, related to the, uh, to the um, other people uh, moving into the same network, network in, in these things. So it, uh, for, the, for the intuition, the only different thing if you are a developer of the tool that you should know uh, what is these features and uh, how uh, this fit for each variable. It's different than uh, you just uh, use a built-in tool or a tool uh, similar to Google. Uh, um, so uh, for, for, uh, gradually, uh, at the moment, maybe this uh, this idea of intuition is. Uh, uh, is, uh, something will be uh, related to your observation and experience to how you develop your own tool and how uh, how you ask yourself this kind of question that we said last time. Uh, So if I would like to put intuition within this uh, diagram, I say that it's uh, something related to the subject, subjective, and it's related to less explainable. And you have to ask yourself um, um, within this time, what is the final reference? Just uh, don't forget this, uh, this one, otherwise, if you agree that yeah every time your intuition works well then uh, at the end you will be objective and you forget yourself so it's something it's like that this kind of loop it's easily that you go from any of these uh, access to the, to, uh, to the other one so if you are in if you, if you have an intuition and and it's very important that you develop your intuition you develop your intuition in, um, in mathematics in coding 
Sometimes you don't need to understand the, everything in detail. And uh, through a lot of experience and uh, a lot of experiments, you develop some intuition that, yeah, these kind of things works like that and that. But of course, uh, following your intuition all the time, it's not good. And at the same time, if you neglect your intuition too much, also this is not good. So this kind of uh, balance point, yeah, I think it's uh, just you need to add uh, a lot of ex uh, experience and ask yourself, uh, uh, importantly, what is my final reference? I will give an, an, another example for this, uh, for this point. If you are, uh, uh, if you will develop a, a plaza for uh, people in the streets, so if you usually say, yeah, from my point of view and from my experience in life, uh, this kind of trees and this kind of uh, uh, water uh, is something um, uh, good for, for humans, they will be relaxed and so on. So you have to, to, to ask yourself about this, is it, it this is something that's uh, uh, subjective. Uh, if you added uh, something to be correlated with, let's say, uh, physics, and uh, say, yeah, this kind of uh, uh, sun with this uh, shading is good that it will, um, it's healthy for people. So, so this is another thing. You are not sure exactly that really the sunlight will be benefit, but you take this as a fact, and this is a kind of an objective. So you do this kind of sun, you, you will design the plaza because you want the sun uh, go into uh, everyone in the room or in the streets. So it's a, it's a very important. Otherwise, you just uh, follow your intuition and uh, you force other people uh, to follow your intuition, especially if you are a designer. So uh, it's, you are not uh, designing something for yourself, you design something for others. So it's uh, important that you uh, you do it uh, like that. Uh, let's say if you will, you will design a hospital. So it, there is some parts you have that, uh, to uh, to, uh, to find a kind of a threshold to forget your intuition, and uh, maybe you have to ask uh, uh, more people experience in, in in these kind of things because it's uh, it's a crucial. If you follow your your intuition to design the rooms and the surgery and uh, and these things, maybe it's, uh, it's nonsense. You have to know much more uh, information about this kind of uh, the mechanism of this uh, hospital elements, how they correlate to each other. So uh, this is another uh, just some examples, and maybe within the, within the next uh, uh, sessions, uh, this kind of question, I think, it will be raised again. Um, Okay, so today there is two uh, parts. The first part will be, uh, okay, I use uh, this just for, for presentation. It's, no, we will not uh, study Mathematica in this class. So if you remember this part, we started, uh, uh, we will start in these two or three lectures with this part of discovery. Okay, then gradually, uh, we will go into the other part, then we will start the project. So from here, within this part, I will, I, I will start uh, to highlight um, these terms. So what's the parametric function, what's implicit, what's, uh, what's points or vectors, okay. distances, what's the Gaussian. And um, in parallel to this, we will uh, start today uh, to give a kind of uh, just um, an introduction to Rhino. And okay, so I will. Uh, and with the uh, Rhino and the Grasshopper, we will just give a very basic commands just to use the interface and uh, just to know a little bit about drawings. Uh, so we will start with this. I think it, most of you already uh, uh, hear this uh, uh, this term of parametric. Uh, nowadays, this uh, kind of uh, term, I think, is very popular to, to hear about parametric architecture or parametric design, and uh, maybe not 
most of you know what is this implicit function. Uh, and I think we have to know these two terms uh, before going to uh, machine learning. This is uh, just my, my intuition. Okay, what is parametric? But before we the, the find this difference between these two terms, we will start with basic math when we call that there is an expression. This expression uh, has just a quick review, most of you should know this, that uh, this in x plus one, this, this is a, a very small formula. And in mathematics, we call this an expression. This expression has, say, these parameters, uh, sorry, uh, these uh, variables. Okay. Some of these variables don't, doesn't change, and some variables change. So we call the two as a co coefficient. The two is a constant, but because it's uh, multiplied by x, which is a variable, and it's unknown. So usually we call two as a coefficient. And uh, in machine learning later, we will call the coefficient as a weight. We will change a little bit of these terms in machine learning. So two is a, is a, a coefficient, and the variable is the, uh, is the this unknown x, and one is a constant, and we call the this plus as an operator. So you have to know these terms because later, if you are interested to continue in this kind of fields, you will you will hear this kind of uh, uh, terms a lot. So the operator is. You, you add things, you multiply. There is a kind of um, an interplay between these kind of uh, constants and variables. Then, with this expression, if we if we uh, want to use it as a function, with, with function, this means that you want to uh, to uh, to try um, uh, to change this uh, this variable x with a lot of domain. There is a lot of variables within a domain. So let's say we want to find uh, the output of this expression if x within a domain with from let's say zero to one. So if x is zero, the output is one. If x is one, the output is three. So you can easily cal calculate this. And if you said that this is an equation, okay, and with equation, and here you, you don't, that you, with function, you don't ask what is this. You have some data and you want to try some, some values and you want to try each of these values and you find the output. And it's similar to what's happening in the example that I showed you the last time. Or, okay, let's say, uh, one moment, please. And this is similar that if you have uh, an object, okay, uh, this uh, box you want uh, uh, to represent it as, a, an, as an expression, maybe you want to, to return out a lot of boxes with different heights. So you have a value and you want to try it in this Z value a lot. So then you have a lot of boxes with different dimensions. But all of them has one expression. So the expression of a box so that it contains uh, some uh, vertices and edges and so on, they are connected to each other. So with the equation, it's different. You search for, for unknown variables. So it's like that I want to know what is x if the output is zero. If we call this as a y, this, these two are variables, x and y. x, we call it independent variable, and y is a dependent variable. y depends on what will happen with x, especially that y doesn't have any other expression, it's just alone. So we call this dependent and independent. And you use this kind of, uh, of ideas as a, as a matrix 
but not with these mathematical equations. Uh, let's say you have, you want to, to design uh, buildings, and uh, there is a kind of an, an output of this building. This, this final output is related to the addition, subtraction, multiplication of elements. With the, if we said that we, a parameter, so what is a parameter? Parameter until now is not there in this equation. There is no, there is no parameter. Parameters means that you have something between X and Y. And if you change it, you are able to control both. This means a parameter that you, that you have some variables, but the parameter has its own expression that control these variables from behind. Give you some examples. We've, we will forget this for a moment, what is parameter. So let's uh, just have a kind of expression. What is uh, this, uh, this output? So, so let's say if we want to plot or uh, have a kind of a, a, a geometrical output of this uh, function, this kind of Cartesian coordinates, you say that this is X and this is Y. I think all of what I say until now is almost, uh, yeah, basics. So with this x, if you um, change this x with any of these values, you will get an output of y. If you connected all of these outputs together, you build a line. And here, sometimes you have another question that if you want to ask about the intersection, the intersection between these two ex expressions. Then you have to put two expressions and at the end you have a kind of a balance that it should be at this time, the X in this, the X and Y in this expression should be the same, the X and Y on this. But in, in, in machine learning, you will have this kind of uh, problems a lot and uh, you think, what is, uh, I have a floor plan, and you ask about all of the probabilities or all of the designs that are suitable to this situation. So the situation, or maybe the outline of a floor plan you want to do is the intersection, maybe between many expressions, many, designs. So I try to correlate a little bit between some mathematical uh, terms and some design terms we use, just to give a kind of an, an, an image of what is the next expression. So you already have a kind of expression in your, in your, um, in your scientific field, but it's not this kind of uh, you know, this symbolic, but you say that uh, I have a floor plan with different kind of um, uh, connectivity between different elements. If we remember these three terms, uh, let's say you have here in math, think about the, the difference between a function and the equation. With the function, uh, you have of course some uh, some ideas about let's say that uh, let's say this x is uh, maybe the height of uh, a person, and maybe these two and one other variables. At the end, it tells me uh, something uh, related to his health. So then, with a deductive, you have some values. And you, you know that this kind of formula, this kind of expression uh, is a kind of uh, a rule. And if I put a lot of these values, I will return out a result. And these results should be, a, 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 I will test it. This is a deductive. 
So with the functions, you are in inductive methods. You have a clear expression. You know all of the uh, correlations. Almost there is no unknown. And you want to, do, to test the output, or you want to, uh, to return an exact output uh, at the end. But with the equation, you have a, you have different things. So you, you know what is the result. You know that uh, this zero is the result that you want to reach. And it's uh, reversed. You have some, uh, you have a, a zero, and you have this uh, expression, and you want to uh, find uh, uh, maybe an explanation uh, for what is this unknown. So it's, it's a reverse uh, process. So which I call that, yeah, this, this is an um, inductive. With the abductive, which is, is not here, that in the abductive, you don't know exactly this. Just to remind you with the examples of the, of the last lecture. I think it is, I hope that this was a clear way you ask yourself these kind of questions. Uh, I want the output is say a flow to be here. I want to uh, reach uh, a specific uh, daylighting uh, daylighting value on uh, on some parts. You know the output, and you know some a little bit of variables. Yeah, I know that yeah maybe the the relate the, the x and y of the windows have this kind of proportion, but I'm not sure yet where should I put it. So with the machine learning will help you in something. It can connect these uh, values and they give you this kind of balance and suggest an operators. So it should suggest to you how should be this interplay to reach the output that you want to do. So with the abductive, this means that maybe you don't know some of these values and mainly you don't know, let's say the operator, I'm not sure what should you multiply, but with, with, with the abductive in the machine learning, usually you know X, you know it, and you know the output, but you don't know the others. Okay, let's... Go to the next parameter. We still didn't get what is this parameter. So it's a, an entity to link uh, two variables. So let's say, I, I'm not sure if you remember this, uh, this equation of, uh, of this uh, circle and uh, this is this is one way to draw a circle that uh, you want to draw a lot of points and to connect them together. And the, the way of you are drawing this series uh, consecutive order of points is by that you say yeah this x and y. And then you control two variables with one parameter. So let's say here the parameter is the angle. And actually what's happening here is just a sequence and a lot of outputs. And uh, in, in this kind of process, you are, this is a deductive. You have a clear expression, you have a clear connections. You just uh, try to throw some values within a domain, you have an output. And with this order, you know, uh, uh, how to connect. And uh, you can find it's uh, something complex. But uh, maybe with one or two parameters, you can control and define this kind of uh, interesting uh, results. Uh, even with a complex, with a 3D 
uh, I mentioned, I think all of this is there is one or two parameters that control variables, which is the nodes, let's say, of this, uh, of this skeleton. Implicit. The previous one, you only draw these points for this circle. For this implicit, something else, you ask him each point in the space, and you ask him if each point in this space and it's x, y. If I ask it this point in this space, what is the x square and plus y square? What is the output? I will just to show you something easier. So one moment. Get uh, these things. Look at it like this. Here you ask a different question. Here it's like uh, yes or no. The output of this is the output of yes or, or no. That you have a space and you, you don't know exactly where is this, is it a circle or not? You don't know. But you ask each pixel, every pixel, take the x square plus y square. Is it equal one or not? No. You do this for each pixel. Then at the end, the points that has these results will emerge. Which actually, actually, within the process, you are not sure yet uh, what, what is the, the output. You just ask all of the points and all of the space. And here was different. Here, you have an equation and we, it will return a point. You don't need to ask a lot of points in space to join you or not. And this idea will be similar to machine learning soon. That you have to establish this space and you have a, you have a kind of a discussion and the questions. You ask all of these points and the one that give you the proper answer, you select. You have to, to be able to, to scan a lot. This is just I uh, changed the, the output is one or two or three or four. Okay. Uh, what you see as a pixel when you do it, let's say in Photoshop, uh, this is actually maybe a, a, a region you ask. It's something else I will show you here. You see this? This is this is what's happening when we say I want a pixel with uh, with a weight uh, one a point or two points in, in Photoshop. This means that you want to, to find a range. It's not an exact point. There is many points within a range, and usually uh, I said these two terms: domain and range. Usually we we call a domain. When, when we uh, deal with this, uh, with the inputs. And with the outputs, we call a range of outputs. A domain of inputs, a range of outputs. For value inputs. Okay. So if you see this thick, thicker, this means that your question was, give me all of the, all of the points that return out it's uh, x squared plus y squared within this range. This was very simple. x squared plus y squared for z squared for r squared. But you see nowadays also this kind of uh, complex. So here, this is the same like the circle, but not uh, curves, it's a surface. So here you ask another question. 
you ask it a three dimensional space. And you have this, this formation, and you ask each point. You have its x, y, and z. And if the output of this interplay Let's say here this is a lot. I just I mean I will show you this. Say one. Now I want a surface that if I ask it any point on this surface and to get the x and y and z and played with this, it returns an output with one. Okay. So here, the expression of this surface is exactly like the circle, but instead of two dimensional, it's just a three dimensional. And if you ask if any of these points about if this x, y, and z going to this equation, it will return a one. And we, as an architect, we use this kind of uh, ideas. When you go into the uh, terrain outside or uh, uh, some things, and you try to make this kind of contour, this is your question, this kind of contour, that uh, what is the outline on the level? This. So the, the outline, this means that all of these points, if it doesn't matter to me what's x and y, and the, 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 uh, your question is the z. If z is one, so the what you are doing in in in, in slicing uh, the uh, uh, lands or uh, these kinds of maps, it's uh, it's something similar to this. But you ask about a specific z, and maybe this is just another representation, just to see uh, exactly what it is. It's it's not. It's a surface. A surface is just uh, with this uh, software. It connects this surface, these points, but it's uh, it, actually it's uh, um, some points in space. Yes, yes. the same stage to compare. And I'm not sure if you know what is this. Uh, a surface is called the Mobius. Okay, it has uh, okay the same idea, but this is parametric. All what you see is controlled with uh, two parameters. It doesn't matter what is this. Actually, it's a, this is a parametric, and and here there is a a sequence of points connected. And consecutive. This is the same. So this is similar to this. But the difference that this Mobius strip with the parametric, it only gives you only one solution, which is the exact solution of exact point with exact. Uh, 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 consecutive order, but with this, it asked all of points in space a question, and all of them has an answer. And with machine learning, your outputs mostly it's a how to develop this implicit surface that contain all of your questions and answers, and the only thing later that if you want to return a design within this space is that you have to know how to ask. It's just this is the what you will uh, try to get a kind of a, a practice 
in future. So the output of, of the machine learning process actually is something like this surface that can contain others. This is just too fast. I think here you see that these two objects, these donuts in this mug, both of them transformed to each other you know, very smoothly. So the question is, what if you have a, a, a space that these both have different shape? but internally they have a similar connectivity. And then you can build a kind of a big space. And then these kind of, these sets from away, they are different. If you remember when I uh, showed you, I was talking about this slide last time. But maybe in, in, in the, the first intuition, that no, these two elements are far from each other. They are not the same. So, and yet with, with a lot of techniques based in machine learning, based on uh, this idea of topology, with topology, you only focus on the relation of the elements uh, without being limited to the space and time. And by that, then you can find a kind of an equivalent class. So there is, there is a, a space, maybe it's not the, this really space that we talk to each other in, it's something else, we call it a topological, that these two shapes may be similar. And to put them and uh, prepare them to the machine learning algorithm, you have to think well how to um, describe them in a similar features or a features that, yeah, maybe features that preserve this, uh, this relation. You as an architect or you as a designer or a planner, you deal with this idea a lot. That you have sometimes uh, elements in uh, different space, but you know that there is a relation. So with this output, I can draw to you many floor plans with different dimensions, with different shapes. But they have a one similar thing that the connectivity between these elements are the same. By like that, you are able to establish a kind of a coordinate in space. But this coordinate is not a physical coordinate. It's, we call it ecological coordinate. And here is, here I said the entrance is connected to reception, reception is connected to the bedroom, reception is connected to the kitchen, the bedroom is connected to bedroom one, and so on. Then it draws this in millisecond. Thank you. But this is the main. So this establish points uh, based on, uh, on connectivity. Here, just see it's uh, the default is this uh, that the item is not connected to itself. This is the, the default of these tools. Um, so now, I, I, I with this uh, with this intro today, we have a kind of, uh, the, the, this is like the first introduction about what is parametric, what is implicit, and what is topology. I just give you some images. 
So with parametric, you are exact about the outputs. With implicit, you have a lot of answers. How to put them together, it's a challenge. You as an architect do these kind of things a lot. And you establish in your mind this kind of space where you can put different, on these points, different designs. So this part is kind of a theoretical part. The second part is Rhino and Gersop. If you are advanced or intermediate, yeah, this uh, next uh, half an hour, I think it's it's not something new for you. what we need from tools like Rhino. If you have it, then install the new PC. Uh, only recently, since two years, now it works on, also in Mac. So with the Rhino interface, it's uh, usually is, uh, it's, uh, it's like, uh, this is the default, but maybe in some uh, the desktop you find, let's say, uh, this command line, we call it command line, it's uh, down. Um, this is a kind of a layer panel on the side. These kind of tools, if you already used before any CAD tools, you will understand from these icons, what does it mean? If you hover the mouse on each one of them. Okay. This is the Mac interface, a little bit different. Okay, so the command line is here. It's just a small part, maybe you can increase it. If you move your mouse on each of these points, this should be, you will be, uh, after, after clicking on any of these uh, uh, icons, you have to uh, follow the instructions about where is the location and so on. And um, these kind of viewports, just by clicking, you can activate any one of them. If you click the double click on the name, say this is a perspective, double click, open it, or make it a kind of a full screen. Uh, by default, here or in Windows, you will find this all snap bar. If you use this in other tools, it tells you where is the end point, near point, perpendicular, and so on. This is some important shortcuts. I just uh, selected those. Uh, uh, I'm not sure on no Mac how it works, but this I'm sure in Windows, you can uh, check it in. Uh, F1 is for help, if you want to, uh, to, uh, to search for a specific uh, command. And uh, in Rhino, there is a kind of a video for each command, how to do it. Click on this and that's that. There is Nice video for each command. F2 is the command history. If you want to see all of the commands you did. F3 is for objects. If you selected an object, like a line or a circle and so on, you can uh, open uh, these uh, properties. Uh, F6 is to show the camera. 
it's dry here. When I, I, I was in perspective, click here, F6. It shows you in the other viewports kind of cone. If you made this scroll, so scrolling just to zoom uh, uh, in, uh, in my laptop with right click, this pan in perspective, right click is to rotate or sorry, or, uh, like orbit or orient yourself around the, the object. Uh, shift plus right click just to make this pan. And this is what happening in top. You will see this. Uh, you can select the camera itself to move it. Or select the target of the camera. Um, if it is ortho, if you know this uh, this name, ortho, it's uh, because you want to draw everything in kind of uh, uh, respecting the axis. So here you can click line, you can write line, and actually just from the first L, it shows you all of the commands that start with L, line, click, and the, uh, one eye on, on, on this command line and the other on the viewport. Here it tells you start of line, where is the point? And there's some options if you want it. If you went to any of these viewports, you can draw the line, and then you can draw the line in front or in perspective. And this is something interesting in this uh, in Rhino that you can click to the first command on one of the viewports and then the second in the another viewport. So now I clicked the first point on, on top, second point in, on front. So this means that the line is vertical. So this is the line. And there is another one, but this is just a, sig a segment of line. We call it segment, just a start and end, nothing else. I click the F6 again from the keyboard. So then you just to hide this camera. Here there is a polyline. And then you start a sequence of points. So I will just make a zoom. If you click from the keyboard F8, this what does it mean ortho? Just as perpendicular. Uh, and uh, just respect the X, Y, and Z. Okay. And then, if you want to close, you can click on this option, or you can, from keyboard, you will find here that each of these options, there is uh, an underlying so this underline is under the C. So if I clicked from the keyboard, C, enter, this means it closed the polyline. So all of the commands is like this. You click the object, you click the, the icon, then you start to draw. Then you can click on the option or you see the, this is undo which is U. So if I click U, enter, this means that the last one, or you click it like this. Close. By the way, now we start to draw something. 
And uh, as I told you, we, we will not get uh, to be very professional, professional in these uh, tools, but just a little bit of the interface. What we need is, okay, so this is a point, and you can draw points. So let's say you can here on this, if you uh, move the mouse, it's a single point, multiple point. If you click the right click on the icon, so this means if you click the uh, left click, it's one point. Curves. So we only take these three lines. This is a, we call it an abs curve. And it's uh, draw a smooth curve between these points. And if you clicked it, it will show you these control points. And uh, just to click on any of these points, you can move it. So if you draw a line and see clicked on it, you can click here, extrude. After you uh, right extrude and press enter, it will show you a kind of uh, an interactive height uh, movement of this object. And here is some questions. Let's say, do you want it solid or not? Which means that, we will see now. Okay. You will find here that the, the top and bottom of this object, there is a kind of surface. Here, there is nothing up or down. And the default of uh, this representation is, we call it wireframe. If you clicked on any of these reports, right click and select shaded, rendered, and so on. You can try in perspective, shift right click, just to expand, left click, big, shaded. And here, with the in uh, in Rhino, if you just click on object and the click and the drag, it's uh, like move. Okay, you move it, and it's separated. Then it's base uh, line. So now I will try to make an, another extrude, but here without solid. Uh, sweep. Sweep is have like one line Now let's say we have this base and this line. Now you just write sweep. Now let's say this only sweep one is enough now for this uh, lecture. Sweep one, it asks you about the rail.
The second question is about the shape. Now for this uh, for this menu it tells you uh, some options about if you want it closed or not, similar to this idea of uh, maybe rebuild to make it more smooth or not. Just some basic ideas you can try it yourself later. And this is what I I need at the moment. Actually, for this lecture is enough. Every lecture, we will just uh, mention some commands. Uh, so the important thing for me is this line. If you want to follow the grid here, you will find this. Um, uh, sorry, it's uh, all snap, which is, I think, if I check. This grid with F9 from keyboard. Uh, I think it's, it works. It's not written here. F9 is, if you want to follow the grid, just to draw a basic F9. Then you follow the grid. Just uh, each one of these is one, one module. This is. Uh, some basic uh, curves or some basic basic shapes. So let's say now I can make a copy from keyboard, just the right copy. And make multiple copies. And when you try to finish, you can just click enter from the keyboard or the right click. So here is this is the idea how we can all of these. Now the, I draw them all with the same exact number of points. But maybe one of them has different shapes, each one. Maybe each one of these rep represents an outline of a, of a of a project, a land, or a floor plan. And then maybe from the next lecture, we will start to use an, uh, another tool that how to call these kind of shapes and ask. So then maybe you ask, I want to, to compare these four together. Which one? Maybe you can draw a lot of them. You have a lot of sketches, you have a lot of uh, outlines of ideas. Yeah, maybe both we can do it next time. Then the basic transform tools, how to, after you draw something, you try to move, rotate, scale, that's it. So how to move. Most of these, uh, uh, commands if it's not here and sometimes I, I don't ah, okay here's a transform okay so with this transform you can uh, click on one of these objects click move select the point to move from you can use these snap tools I want this to move from this point Point to move to that point. Okay. This is for move. Uh, okay, so I, it's easier for me. Rotate. I just work right. Rotate. There is a rotate for view. There is only a rotate on a two dimensional or rotate in a three D. So if I, I said rotate, what's the center of rotation? And it tells you that this is a point. This should be a point. So I, okay, this is a center of rotation. The angle, you can write an angle 
and the, or you can write the first reference point, say this one, the second reference point. I think that it's right now is very intuitive if you want to try this couple of uh, commands. So this is, so for move, just uh, finally move object, select object to move from, from this point, move to the same for rotate and for scale. Rotate, click, center of rotation. When, when you click rotate, after the center of location, starting point, and then also you, you can write the second point or an angle. For scale, what is the base point of a scale? You want to scale these objects, let's say from this point, and you click the scale factor, let's say two. So this means that it's just scaled by two. Mirror, this is the last one I selected for this course. Mirror, you have this object, you want to mirror it. Select the mirror plane. The end of the mirror plane. In mirror, you click an object and set, you start right click, select the object. So now I selected it. You can select it done or enter. All of these instructions is already written here. Just click follow it. Right click. Then you can remove this copy. So this means that the object itself will be mirrored. And the same thing in the move or rotate. All of them have this, this option of, uh, of copy. If I want to rotate, there's an option for copy. You can copy. This is the, uh, enough for me for this Rhino, nothing more. Just you draw very basic thing. Uh, I will uh, send you some you know, maybe YouTube tutorials or some interesting uh, tutorials I see. Very basic thing, just to draw lines and geometry with Rhino. Next lecture, we will go into Grasshopper. Also, we will just get an introduction about how to call objects in Rhino. And with the custom tools that I uh, developed for this course, it would, it would just return you one output of a uh, machine learning algorithm. And then we will start about thinking mainly about the objects and the features. This is the, the focus of the course, not the, the how to do these kind of uh, algorithms. Thank you for today.